sound on survey to licensed operators all across the supply chain. Uh, we asked them feedback on specific questions. We asked for their comments. And we largely based all of those replies that we received and put them into these questions. Um, and then, you know, there's about 15 questions that we sort of got in mind from, from that. Uh, if we have time, we'll definitely, you know, do some QA if we can. But they're pretty dense and meaty subjects, so I think we can just, like, go through and have a good time with it. Okay? Everyone cool? All right, that's how we're going to do it. But first, all right, so, Lori, thank you for being here. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Um, I don't know if everyone knows, but Lori's uh, husband uh, had a huge milestone yesterday. and It was a huge celebration, and she drove up for this event while something is going on with family and everything. It's great. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It, it means a lot. We're like, come on, Lori. Please say yes. Um, so last time we were here, we were in the amphitheater over there, right? I don't know if everyone remembers. And uh, I kind of wanted to just take a moment and retrace what we've been through in the last year. And I think you guys are all going to get a kick out of it. Um, so right after we left last year, we had July 1. And if everyone remembers July 1, there was the lab testing and packaging requirements and the destruction of products. Uh, that wasn't really fun. Uh, we had emergency regulations, uh, number two, and then public comment period. We had the regulations when we submitted it to the OAL and waiting in that, that time frame. Uh, we had, in parallel, temporary application process and the annual uh, application process. And then you had a trickling of provisionals that went out. Um, temps, you extended. But then we had to legislate to get permission to provide extensions while processing applications, uh, or not. And I don't know if anyone knows this, but Lori's team definitely in, in December, her, she, I remember you saying on stage, you're like, we will process every single application. And you guys did. You were working through the holidays, you were working weekends, you were working nights, your entire team, and you finished the entire queue which I thought was really admirable and amazing. So thank you for doing that. Uh, then it brings us to 2019, where the writing on the wall that CD, CDFA and CDPH weren't actually allowed to give extensions. Uh, yeah. And then that led us to uh, a round of licensing attrition uh, from temporaries to nothing, um, or temporaries to provisionals and, and, and annuals. Then uh, we have the new legislation that's being pushed around sampling, uh, white labeling, non-licensing, all this other stuff that, that's going through. And then ab about like last month, your, uh, the agency BCC started pushing out provisionals. Uh, and then, oh, and also the $10 million equity grant money was announced on a registration process, but then put on hold, right? Um, guys, that was just like a high level of last year. I mean, does it feel like, oh my God, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but we've had a lot of wins and, and this is why, I want, and these come directly from the survey responses. Uh, cannabis is legal, people are not going to jail, right? Uh, amazing. We have clean medicine, uh, maybe a little too clean, but uh, <laughs> a little too clean. I think the metals maybe a little bit, uh, we could accept a little bit more metals. Uh, deliveries are allowed everywhere. Uh, so we're not restricting access to Californians uh, and local governments who enacted a ban, which is huge. And uh, I c I cr credit to your uh, group, you've advocated for that. You stood for that. Um, and without your support and your fight, I, I doubt we would have had statewide delivery. Um, so kudos to that. Um, issuing temp licenses, thank you for extending it and giving people time to catch up. Uh, transparency for the consumer. Uh, what's interesting, social equity is more of a focus than ever. Uh, from last year to this year, that is a driving point in many of the conversations we're having. Um, after some setbacks, the, the Compassion program is being reconsidered. Uh, so that's great to, for Compassion. Thank you for that. Event licensing, we were having more events. Provisional licensing, and just in time for Meadowlands, the Q&A database. Yeah! yeah. Yeah! I knew 
might be in trouble if I didn't have that yeah. ready. Oh, Boy, we... I made it by the wire, too. <laughs> I mean, that it's phenomenal. Thank you for doing that. I mean, I can't tell you how many questions that we all, I mean, even this weekend, share. And to have a legitimate source that's saying, hey, this is the answer, no misinformation we can go to helps a lot. Uh, so thank you for making that happen. I knew I'd be in trouble <laughs> if I didn't. You would ask. I'm, I'm yeah. like, we got to get this done. No, and my team did a great job. And we're just going to keep adding to it, by the way. And these are a lot of the questions that we're answering by email. And instead of just going to one person, we're just going to share it all with the, uh, you folks. I think it's going to be helpful. Yes. Yes. Uh, for the consultants that make money on just that piece, you know, sorry. Uh, but let's, let's tackle some other things and help us uh, help each other out. All right, so that was like, well, I mean, that's a lot, right? Any thoughts on the wins or the past? It, it's, it's been brutal. That's what I, for you guys too, right? I mean, like the last year, it, 2018 is like a blur, and I, you know, I almost forget some of the things until you mention them. Um, and I, I will say this, uh, what a lot of you don't know either is that the first four months of 2019, we were statutorily mandated to have a Department of Finance audit. So for four months, we had about eight auditors looking at everything. So um, that'll be coming out on July 1st. They have to report it to the legislature. So it's something you might want to keep an eye out for. Wow. So you go through audits too. Yeah. Okay. It's like a report card. You guys got me. I, have a, I saw your report card. I'm like, oh, no. And then, yeah, everybody's. Wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible. Kat Packer was here yesterday, and she's like, at least we don't have to go through everything that we just went through again. Um, and if anything, everything that we did go through hopefully has made us more resilient um, and knowledgeable about the process and kind of what we need to do to kind of continue to navigate and move ahead. All right. So let's, let's dive in here. Um, so the journey is largely focused on creating a successful regulated supply chain for the largest cannabis market in the world. It's a tough job. In the last year, we've taken both steps forward and backward. What do you need in terms of support to realize your vision of a successful supply chain currently? So um, I think that when we talk about um, big businesses, middle, medium size, small businesses, we want a little bit of everything, right? You want to balance. And um, one of the things in the statute, when you have full vertical integration, it does make it difficult to strike that balance because, you know, the big guys can hold every license, so can the small guys. So that gets, that gets tough. Um, but I think uh, as for the state of California, we really start have to look at the small businesses and how do we make you know the new businesses coming up? How do we make them successful? And I don't know that we've struck that balance yet. Mm -hmm. I think our regulations are 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 hard for new businesses starting out. And of course, when I say what kind of support we need, well, and I think. For one thing, you guys are a big voice, and that is we need more enforcement um, on the unlicensed market. We can't ever expect you to make it if you're going to continue to compete in this market with uh, an unregulated, unlicensed market that, frankly, there's a lot of you know, some of them are trying to get a license, but there's a good chunk of them that have no intention of getting a license. They're almost saying, hey, we're just going to wait till somebody says something or do, do, do something. And so... For, for us at the Bureau, um, I talked with my staff. I mean, I say this, and I, and I don't take it lightly. It is a fight every single day, but I see the industry, um, your voice, I think, means a lot. And to continue to say, hey, we need more enforcement. We need more to go out and, and make sure that we can compete in this market. So I think enforcement is a, a, is a big deal, um, and, and it, it touches so many of us. So... Um, I'm hoping over this, I, I just want to crush the illegal market. And I, I don't usually say that out loud, but I feel the same way you do because we didn't work, go through all this for the last few years to have this market be undermined for people that don't want to get in the licensed market. So we feel it personal too, because um, you don't want to sacrifice all we sacrifice to, to see Basically, people just say, well, we're not going to get involved. We're just going to, you know, not get licensed. It's not fair to all of you here that are licensed, paying all your fees and taxes. So, Yeah, so, you know, to summarize more like having an ability for small businesses to compete and, you know, going after enforcement in a way where the illicit market 
you know, does not exist and we can continue to thrive. Yeah. Um, and, and one more thing. Mm-hmm. I, I had a conversation. I don't know. Maya's here. She was a perfect example. She asked me a question and she is a manufacturer. And the hardest thing for us, like when Alex and Andre from my team is here, when people come to me and say, hey, you know, something happened. We had to relabel all our product. It would be nice if we could do something a different way. And I have to say, well, we don't regulate the manufacturers at the BCC. You have to go to another agency. That's really hard to do when you have to deal with three different licensing agency, and that's not including all the other agencies. And so I want to solve problems, but it's hard when some problems it, it's difficult to solve because it doesn't fall under our authority. And so I think we need to find better ways to collaborate mm-hmm. with ourselves at the state, right? Yeah. Um, and can we just make one agency and put yeah. you guys on top of that? Can we? Yeah. I don't know. Is there, can we do that? <laughs> what? I guess we have to look into that. Is that a ballot? I don't even know. But yeah. like, but it, what you're saying is that there's just so much inter-agency work yeah. that doesn't I, make it through. I think we got to really think about that going forward. And but I, I want to. I'm committed to. We got to have better communication. I'm going to tell you if, if sometimes it's hard for me to get an answer from other state agencies, I can only imagine what it is for the industry, right? And so uh, yeah. so we've got to do better there, and I think uh, we're going to concentrate on that, that we got to have consistency between the agencies and be responsive. And um, I think you guys know we, we want to hear from you. We really do. We want your feedback, but... We know there's, I mean, you just mentioned it, like lab testing. Maybe we need to relax a little on the heavy metals. I, I do think, um, I think lab testing is very important. I think we all think that. But where's, where again, where's the balance? And yeah. do we need to, to look at those things? Yeah, I, mean, I think what's interesting, specifically the labs, it was, if you look at other states and their lab testing requirements, California is pretty stringent. It is. Um, and when you're failing on something where other states, it's okay, and you're failing by, you know, 0.1 or whatever. It's it's detrimental to these uh, to these operators. Uh, it's a huge setback. Um, oh, so last year we asked you if you had a north star metric, and I think you were at the time just saying, well, there is a lot of change. It's very difficult to have a north star metric. Uh, processing as many licenses was a metric. Uh, currently, is there a north star metric for t- 2019 for the BCC? Well, as you know, we're, we're, our metric is like the end of July right now. We got we have about eighteen hundred temporaries that are expiring. So, uh, and getting we're getting a provisional. Yeah, getting a provisional. We 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 don't want any gap in licensure. I I am my I, my staff understands. I don't want anybody expiring. Nobody's expiring. We got to get you in a provisional. And if that means we got to call you on Sunday morning, and we're hoping we're calling you on Sunday awesome. morning. Do it. <laughs> Can you make that happen for CDFA? and Uh, CDPH. I mean, I just wish that was shared across all agencies. Um, Well, yeah. So that's a short-term metric, but just, but that is the direction we say. I don't, I mean, I don't want anybody slipping through the cracks, but we also don't want you staying in a provisional. We want to get those annuals out, and I think that's important for a lot of you. I, I don't like the word temporary or provisional. I like the word annual because that means you're here to stay, and uh, so that's that's a big. I mean, obviously, still going, you know, working on that uh, enforcement, and then uh, just so you know, we're looking at we're look, we're already starting to rewrite some of our regulations. Um, we're we we have there's a lot of things we need to correct. Where there's a lot of things we need to clarify, and so it's not. This is no time to say, hey, you, you know, you're stuck with the regs. I, I think um, if you have feedback, if things that you think aren't working. Now is the time to start telling us, hey, take a look at this or that. And that's what we're doing right now. And, and depending on what happens with legislation, you're probably going to see uh, a regulation package, at least clean up and clarification and new legislation towards the end of the year. Oh, wow. You are busy. Yeah. Um, I mean, the BCC is a really tough job. Uh, I can only imagine what you and your department has to go through because not only are you processing applications, going to these meetings, talking to all these agencies, you're hiring more staff, you're integrating them into the process, you're talking to multiple stakeholders. Those stakeholders often are changing too uh, to try to keep track of everyone. You know, it can get, I don't know, it can get easy just to, to just like, all right, maybe this is too much. 
you know, what is motivating you to continue to show up at everything, participate, keep push, you know, pushing forward, still having a positive attitude about everything. Like, you know, I'm just cur you know, curious about that. So there's many times when I, it is overwhelming and you do get down. You see, we see the struggles. I think the hardest part right now is because we do, most of my staff, we take it personally. And normally when you're a regulator, you don't get that kind of emotion. But I don't like to see people struggling to just survive. So I think what motivates me is I think, there's, we, there's more we can do. It's not enough that we, I, I think I've always said this, it's not enough just to put in regulations and say, oh, we got our final regulations, our work is done. I feel like I'm, my work is quite not done. I got to make things better. I got to leave it in a better place for those who come after me. And so um, I, I don't want to see so many people hurting and painful um, because if anything you guys have taught me, cannabis isn't supposed to be that and it shouldn't be that yeah. right um absolutely so, so yeah uh last november we elected Go uh, governor newsom who was part of the blue ribbon campaign on actually moving 64 forward so he helped design the framework and and you were tasked with implementing it and now he's seeing that implementation process um he has you know been more aware of what's going on in the industry is more connected and has also hired um you know advisors like nicole elliott who was head of office of camp in san francisco who was here yesterday uh, to his administration. You know, what's your relationship with Governor Newsom's office and how have things changed from working with Governor Brown? You know, what are their priorities and specifically, you know, how does your mandate changed? So I, in Governor Newsom's office has been actually really responsive. Um, they really understand the issues and I think a lot of that came from him being so involved with the Blue Ribbon Commission. Uh, Nicole Elliott came on uh, just a few months ago and she's just hit the ground running and she really has a good overview of cannabis. So it is nice that we have somebody directly in the in administration that we can go to when we do have issues that come up. So for us, th yeah. that's been a, that's been huge for us. So um, and um, we have a really good relationship with them. So um, I'm really looking forward um, to the next year because I think together, I mean, it, it, again, there's, so many, there's only so much the Bureau can do. So having someone like her on our side, it really helps. And the administration that actually wants to move forward and push compassion and all these other exactly. things. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think that's really key. Um, so I'm gonna have you play doctor for a moment. Um, so we, uh, as part of the survey, collected data points and basically said to, to measure the overall health of the industry. So okay, we have some vitals here. Um, and based off of these vitals, love to give you know your thoughts on the diagnosis of it. Um, so we had uh, five questions here and they go from a scale of one to five. One poor, uh, five great. Uh, how would you rate the transition? Oh, and, and so uh, these people just marked off between one to five. Uh, how would you rate the transition to current regs? Uh, two thirds rated it uh, one or two. How would you rate the metric rollout so far? 70% uh, rated it a one or two. Uh, are you more or less profitable than you were last year? 53% are less profitable. Are you hiring? Uh, one third is hiring, two thirds are frozen. Do you believe California has created an environment in which small cannabis businesses can succeed? 95% said no. Uh, so these are the same questions we asked last year, but of stark difference in just the financial. Well, I'm not going to be the doctor. Those are the vitals. What do you think, doctor? Yeah, it's sort of terrifying, right? Yeah. When, you, when you see that, and that's one of the, I felt like, that's not a very good report card. Um, and I don't know how long I'd be a doctor with those <laughs> yeah. stats, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's definitely alarming. I think, um, but to your point on what success looks like, you know, getting those numbers up will tie into helping a lot of the operators here that are going through that. Um, and, you know, your commitment on doing the Q&A and all this stuff, it's just like, we're gonna have to attack it from a lot of different angles. Uh, so this is on the interagency one. Um, do we need a, a task force or commission with representatives from the BCC, Food and Ag, Public Health, Tax and Fee Administration to facilitate interagency communication? Is that something that BCC should quarterback? 
I mean, it goes back to what I said about uh, coordination, and, yep. and yeah, I, I think that that's a great idea. Who came up with that? That's a great idea. You know, so. we're just uh, putting some ideas <laughs> out guys, there. You guys have got a lot accomplished this weekend. We got a lot accomplished. <laughs> uh, we've, been, we've been talking a lot and getting feedback from everybody. No, I mean, Woo! I, I think you. I think what you guys. Uh, I mean, I think that your ideas. I mean, we don't. The state certainly. You guys figured this out. We don't have the market on all the good ideas. You have a lot of good ideas, and you know, we work for you. You you're paying your taxes. You're paying your license fee fee. So some of this stuff is is good to demand. Like, hey, we need better intercoordination. How about putting a task force? I actually like that idea. So. Mm-hmm. I am I'm in favor of something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Should I don't know about quarterbacking it can you know, but I mean, what the we, heck? Uh, every team heck? needs a quarterback. Yeah, it's better than being the doctor, obviously. Yeah, I know you don't stats. want to be the doctor. <laughs> Maybe Doctor's I can have tough. some better stats as a quarterback. Doctor's tough. Right. Um uh, so this uh, pr- uh, relates to metric. So, you know, seventy percent related one or two. I mean, not a lot of people have had access to it yet. Uh so I think that l- data is a little skewed. Um our experience at Meadow has been pretty interesting. You know, our engineers had no access to the UI. Uh, we had to build pretty much in the dark on it. And metrics, not that user friendly. It's a little bit slow. It's prone. It's really prone to human error. If you don't know the system intuitively, it's, it's there. Um, so it's pretty cumbersome to account for, especially when you're building software to integrate something that that's there. And we also had found a lot of artifacts from other states that weren't California specific as we were going through. Um, so, you know, one thing that we're seeing is once you get access to metric, you have to order your tags. And then once you get your tags, uh, you have to put your inventory in, right? Uh, but the clock starts 30 days from the time you uh, have your training, not 30 days after you get your tags, which I think is we basically lose two, three weeks of getting the inventory in. Um, so these are just some of our experiences. What's your experience with BCC? What is the feedback that you're getting from licenses? Is this working the way you expected it to? I know it's not under your purview and control. Otherwise, I, th- I feel it might, would be in a better position. That's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, but here you're, it's a big thing that's coming. So and it's here. So I think we're experiencing some of the same things you are. Um, we're seeing as it relates to even our license types, like micro businesses, for example, it's very difficult if you're, a micro business manufacturer distribution and retail, how that looks in metric that really wasn't accounted for very well. And for a lot of us at BCC, we probably got to look at the system around the same just recently. Yeah. We didn't have recently. access to the system. So uh, we were relying on another agency to sort of navigate our regs. So we're, we're finding we need to, we're already asking for changes from metric because um, I, I, I don't feel it's intuitive now. At least we get on there and we're like, I, I, I can only imagine that if you're having to do this every day, you really do almost have to have someone that understands the system, hire someone specifically just to do metrics. So I think we need to make improvements there. And to, um, I, I, like you were saying, I feel like um, the rollout probably wasn't as you know, it didn't go as well as we thought it would. Um, for us, we know, like, I, I don't even know if it was a good idea telling you guys that you have to put all your inventory, that our regs say that you got to put all your inventory. Yeah. And um, we're, unfortunately, if I think if we knew, understood metric and how it worked better last year because we didn't have access to the system, I don't think we would have asked you guys to do that. Uh, so one of the things we're doing is if some of you are retailers or distributors, we've actually turned off your ability to get tags because we want to we want to reach out to you first so we can explain what we expect because we had we had retailers asking for like 50,000 tags because they planned on tagging every single product and we have saying no, we don't want you to do that. We just want you to tag one like candy bar and say, hey, we've got 5,000 units of candy bar instead of doing everything. So um, we've been trying to like yeah, we've been seeing that too. Yeah, fix that a little bit so you're not spending so much time at the the at the beginning trying to log your inventory in. So we're learning right, right there with you, which you probably won't really. That's sort of scary. But what we are finding is that it's taking up a lot of our time. And so we're pulling from positions. 20%. From, it's, 
it's it's yeah. a it's a lot. I, I've got one full time person. I'm I'm bringing in a whole unit just on the BCC side to deal with the questions and the issues and what we have. So uh, you're going to see from us in the next coming months putting more resources to help you guys because I think that is our job. Uh, this is the state system. We got to help you navigate it, and that means we we found that even with BCC, we have to have the the folks on our side that understand metric too well, so we can walk. Because I we're we're not. I don't know that going to metric is the answer. We've got to have the answers for you and walk you through the process. But I I think we'll get there. I. But I want you to know on the BCC side, um, we're not. I mean, as much as we say you got to have that inventory or tags order. You know, we're very flexible on those timelines in our regulations. Very period. flexible. We are very flexible. Great. So. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, one thing that uh, has recently happened with Metro. Am I going to get in trouble here? You guys are like, but anyway, I just want you no, to know. No, you're not going to get in trouble. We, we also want to get you credentialed. You're too, not going to get in so, trouble. Okay. Absolutely. No, no, no. You're, you're no. I think we're just, here, like, I think we're just here. like, we agree. <laughs> Yeah, we're happy. There you go. This makes us happy. Okay, Look at these good. smiling faces. Okay. No, everyone's happy. Okay. Um, Metric recently opened its additives API uh, based on a request from the state. Um, how are requests from the state to metric handled and prioritized? Are there going to go? Are there going to be any metric user groups where people in the industry can weigh in on feature and API prioritization? Yeah, I would love that. That I think uh, if you leave here today and you go back and. Go to CDFA and metric and say that. I think that would be great because here's the problem. Uh, so we, we've all asked for a few things too. Like one, I don't know if any of you knew this, but the certificate of analysis that the labs fill out, there was no ability for them to upload that. Oh, yeah, the I system. know that. You knew that. <laughs> oh, so brutal. for every, I don't know if there's any lab folks here, but if you're, you would have to go through for every test and write, write you know, click you know, pass, fail, pass, fail. And so we did, we are having that change. So you can, you're going to get your results faster, right? You can just upload it and store it. So those, that's just one of them. But uh, we, like, again, we've had some issues with the distributor one. So of course, when you're BCC, we want to say we're top priority, right? But then public health may have a priority mm -hmm. and food nag may have a priority. So it gets very difficult when the three of us are trying to prioritize because we all think, that's a priority. Maybe the answer is, and you guys are brilliant here, is the industry prioritize it. What's affecting you the most? What do we need to work on first and what can wait? So I, I think that's, you got, you're onto something there. Yeah. We've actually organized or self-organized in uh, a lot of the trade organizations, track and trace groups. Um, you know, for the Cannabis Distribution Association, we have a weekly meeting on metric calls uh, where we're just troubleshooting and providing advice and saying, hey, this is what you should do here. Um, you know, recently, the transfer API uh, is open if you request it, which is really important. If you think about the transfer API, before that, you had to create everything within the system, and now you can, can use it. Um, but a lot of this stuff isn't being published. Like, you don't know unless you know. Right. So I really encourage everyone to get engaged with their, um, their associations and the, the, uh, the regulatory bodies to, to really get a handle on it, because there are a lot of nuances here. Um, but I'm glad that you, you share the pain of metric. I do. And I think we all, if you're, yeah. if we're not putting good data in the system, then what use is metric, right? So we, we have, to, right? It, it, Absolutely. Yeah. Then we're, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, switching gears. What does social equity mean to you? What does a successful equity program look like? Well, I, I don't know that I know what a successful program looks like because apparently we put one out and then we took it back. So we're, we're working on it again. So yeah, you have to I, think about it a little bit more. We have to think about it a little bit more, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. I think it's always, you know, it's always good to be able to, to, to look at something and say, hey, maybe we didn't really hit the mark on that. Let's pull it back. So um, I think for, um, for us at the Bureau, um, I think it goes back to struggles and um, who are the pioneers with this product and getting legalization? And are they sitting at the table? And I think it's making sure that it's open for anybody that wants to get a license or be in a business or be employed by a business in cannabis that it is a vo very positive experience. I don't, you don't want anybody left behind. You're right. We're not, we're not arresting people like we used to, but 
it, that I don't think that's enough. We need to, as a state, uh, we need to bring be more inclusive and bring those that were really the ones that were most affected by the war on drugs in, into the system. Um, and I think we're still navigating that. I do think you're seeing a commitment on the administration because mm -hmm. not only do we have the 10 million, now we have the 15, 15. million. Yep. And you know, I, I think that conversation and, and it has, has it, people are talking. And so, and I know money doesn't solve everything, but it sure does help because one of the things we, even putting out our equity application in uh, the month of March, we were seeing jurisdictions passing equity ordinances at like a like a real tremendous rate. It's like wow, they they made this they happen pretty quick, yeah. And so I, I, that was a good thing, and I think that that was what sort of triggered. We're going to need more money. There's a lot of jurisdictions out there that are putting social equity, um, making it a priority. So I'm happy that we're part of this. I think we're still trying to figure out what is a successful equity program, but I think you're going to see some front runners coming up um, from some of these cities that have been doing it for, uh, for, a, for a while. And mm -hmm. I think you're going to see, and, and I'm hoping by, you know, We'll, we'll get that money out because I think the important thing, it's one thing to wave money around, but you got to get it in the hands, right? Yep. You got to get it in your hands because you guys can't wait. And, and we get that. Yeah. So, well, actually, it was interesting. Marissa and Kat uh, and Joe and Nicole yesterday, they mentioned something about they had to go through all these hoops and setting up their social equity programs and, and the entire structure. And they were thinking about trying to not so much open source, but create documentation and process and help other counties and cities stage up these programs. And when it comes to social equity, um, a more homogenous uh, system throughout the state, which you know allows, you know, makes it more frictionless. Um, you know, one thing that we've been seeing that's alarming though is you know, how do you prevent equity programs from being taken advantage of by predatory actors uh, who are not intended beneficiaries of these licenses? I think anytime uh, the state is giving money to the city and county, it's our responsibility to make sure that money is being used uh, appropriately and that we are uh, monitoring things like that. I, I don't know that we're always going to be able to catch that, but uh, I, I think for the most part, I think we will have a good system in place that we can at least audit and make sure you know, it's going to who it should be going to. Um, and I think we rely, you know, like anything, like complaints or anything, I think we rely a lot on the industry to, to bring that, that information that. forward to us. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, taxes. It should be no surprise that taxes are a major point of contention for licensees up and down the supply chain. When there have been opportunities for a reprieve from these taxes, the attempts at reform seem to consistently fail. In a recent example, Bonta's bill, AB 286, would have put a pause in the cultivation tax and given a one-year reprieve to farmers to show that a decrease in taxes would lead to an increase overall. Um, in your opinion, you know, what's the state of taxes? Why aren't we may moving forward on lowering it? Or you know, why are we, what, where are you thinking on, or are we on taxes? I know it's not under your, it's, but just, just yeah, opinion. I, well, I think it's like, you know, I mean, taxes is not a, you know, that's not a popular term, really. When you think taxes, you think negatively, right? Yeah. And I, I think when you have different tax structures uh, from the state and then your local, local jurisdiction has a different tax rate, I think it just makes it very difficult. Um, I think one thing I've been learning is like, I think everybody just thinks you're making all this money and so you can pay all this taxes. But I think, again, it's a balanced approach because it's not just the taxes. You're hit, you're all getting licensing fees now. I mean, you're having to pay licensing fees and all that. So, um, so our feeling is, is I want whatever's gonna be more successful for the industry. And I think, um, it's very difficult for you to plan when there's different, when you have state taxes, you have different local taxes. I think um, it would be nice if we had a more, uh, I think, thoughtful approach when it came, when it comes to taxes. But, and then it's hard to pay for your taxes. And I always say, if, if it's going to be hard to pay for your taxes, who's going to do them, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, and it's in cash and, right. and all that. I mean, one of the things that we're really scared of on July 1 is, or at least I'm scared of, you guys can be scared of whatever you're scared of. Uh, is 
the possibility of CDTFA raising that excise tax. And, you know, in my mind, if it goes from a 60% markup to 100% markup or 80%, whatever it is, you're going to see an effective tax rate go from 24% to 30% at the distribution level to the retail level. And then to the consumer, you're going to see 8 to 12% because you're going to see the, the excise is built into the COGS, that local tax is going to tax it, the state tax is going to tax it. So you're looking at, yeah, another 10% of increase in prices to the consumer. Um, and you know if that happens, it's being done on data that isn't in the state track and trace system. So there's no way to really verify it or anything like that. But you know, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, have you heard rumblings of, of CDTFA potentially doing that? You know, Nick was in uh, the CCIA summit. He says, we have the authority to do it. We're looking at it. He didn't say it was going to be done, but this was months ago. Right. And uh, I'm just trying to prepare myself on July 1. <laughs> so I, I, and I, by the way, we talk to CDTFA a lot, and I, I do think they get it. Do they think the markup's higher, perhaps? But I think they understand that it's going to just create volatility oh, in the Oh, it's super fragile right now. But I think, again, having that markup, a wholesale price markup that can change every six months, it does, doesn't create, like, comfort level right because you think you're good for six months and then the next six months it could be something else and it was a big reason why we changed our licensing fees we were basing our licensing fee fees on that wholesale markup and so i think that's the difficult part for the industry is just that every six months you're always like wondering what's going to happen and yeah. you know if and i think as state agencies you know it's not good when we're creating this uh anxiety right i'm going to tell you like i know all of you worry because i i worry too but there's nothing worse when you guys don't know what's coming and, and have that anxiety and i think that again creates folks maybe not getting into a license maybe because they're not sure and things of that nature and and really um i think we need to give you guys more a better comfort level of what's coming down the yeah. road I mean, especially because there's operators that are not marketing up 100%. Right. They're at 60% right. or 30%. I've seen some at 30. Um, I don't know why, but they're at 30. Um, and, and without track and trace, I mean, they're looking at, you know, they're looking at some of the invoices in our manifest, but it's not giving them the information they really exactly. need to make that informed decision. So, but I think they understand that though. But I think it's for us. We don't, we don't know what they're going to do either though. Okay. Great. Not that I'm trying to cause anxiety. Don't be anxious. <laughs> so it'll it's all going to be yeah. okay. Nothing is wrong. Everything right, is great. Yeah. Nothing is wrong. Everything is great. It was just this mantra we had at the leadership summit that was like, you are perfect. Nothing is wrong. Okay. Um, uh, d I mean, do you anticipate any reprieve from taxes on the horizon? No? No? Uh, all right, all right. Then, Probably not. No more taxes. All right, no more taxes. All right, tax moving on. Question. I'll give you a good one. All right. Um, uh, to your point on the illicit market has been a pain point for licensees. Uh, we know this is not lost in the BCC and your office have taken measures to battle this. Um, can you tell us more about the public awareness campaign you are undertaking to point consumer behavior toward licensed businesses? Uh, do you think it will be sufficient when consumer behavior tends to be driven by... Do you think this will be sufficient, though, when consumer behavior tends to be driven by price and convenience? So do I think it's, complete, it's sufficient? I think it's uh, one part of what we need to do. So I don't think it's going to solve. I don't think the public awareness campaign is going to solve the illicit market at all. But yep. um, I always look at it. we got to come at it at all angles. So you got to have aggressive enforcement. You've got to keep licensing people. We've got to work with the jurisdictions to make sure. I mean, it's it. It's getting we we can't issue licenses in a majority of the cities and counties, so we got to keep on that. And then we wanted to have a public awareness campaign too, because sometimes I think we forget. A lot of us, you know, cannabis is twenty four seven, but for the average consumer, they're just looking, like you said, yeah. for the price point and where 
where I can get cannabis. They're not living this. They don't understand. So they're going to get it where they can get it cheaper. But if we can sort of change some of these California consumers' mind that we want you to shop licensed uh, shops, we want you to get safe cannabis. Um, is it going to change everybody's mind? No, but I know this is California is, you know, big on organics and, you know, you know, craft products. And so I think you can sway some people to go out of their way to say, hey, do they have a license or not? And ask that question. So that's one part of the campaign. And again, it's, it's something. Is it going to change everything? No. The other part is to really inform the illegal market that we're, we're you know, we know where you are, so Ooh. yeah, I, I like. What, I, yeah, you like that? Yeah, right, all right. Well. You know, it's time to get licensed, and this is how you get licensed. And so, is it going to change everybody? No, but I, I, you know, I'm a big believer. You just hit everybody on all fronts. This unlicensed market, and you're hoping that at, you get more people into the regulated market. And so that's um, Alex. Where's Alex Traverso? He's over here. there. He's actually leading up that, so you Thank know you, he is very good about taking feedback. Uh, they're going, you know, they've been going to the associations and running by some of our ads. You know, it's always good for us to get feedback because you know the state trying to do ads sometimes. They, you know, you probably are going, this is not going to work, right? Yeah. So CCIA has been very good, the California Minority Alliance. So. You guys have a better idea of what's going to work yeah. than us. So, um, so it's it's been a great learning experience, and so I, I really encourage you guys. If you have any good ideas, please let us know. Because again, what works up here in Mendocino County probably doesn't work in LA. So it's it, it's it's been a pretty big undertaking. I think a lot more work than I expected, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah, that's great. I think any message to help educate the consumer is great. I, I have to say, nothing's easy in cannabis. Is that what you guys feel? Something? It's like whatever. It's, oh it's, my God. It's, it's, but it's all worth the, the effort, by the way. And I truly believe that. It's not easy, but it's worth the effort. I agree with that. Um, we're, we're crushing right now. I think we have four more questions. So we may have time for like two more, two or three questions. Um, uh, what are your biggest fears for the viability of the regulated cannabis industry in California? I'm, I'm pretty simple. I, we've, we've got to make sure the regulated market is successful. And what I mean by successful, that you're stable, you're able to hire people, you're able to make money. Um, and that is, as far as I'm concerned, that is our task here, is to make you successful. And... We need to do whatever it takes to make sure that happens because there is no, I don't think anybody here, well, maybe you do, wants to go backwards. I don't no. want to go backwards. Um, but Breed forward. Um, but it, it, it does, um, it, it, and it's not just the Bureau, by the way. It's the entire state, of, it's all, the state government, it's the industry, it's the consumer. It's really um, making sure, you know, I, I'd like to see cannabis really, nor I think it's already, you know, when I looked at three years ago and now, I mean, cannabis is becoming normalized. Um, all the, the, the uh, in, you know, invent and you guys are innovative in all your products and it's just incredible. And you guys know I come from alcohol and it's like such a departure. You know, you have beer, wine, distilled spirits and cannabis. It's just like what a, it's, it's, it is truly amazing what the entrepreneurs out here have been doing with cannabis. And um, so I, I, you guys, uh, I mean, I just think you're going to be, I mean, this is where it is. I think this is where it is. I agree with you. Uh, will, uh, this is kind of interesting. You know, th another thing that's coming is hemp. You know, there's a bill that's moving through uh, that would possibly bring in hemp uh, agriculture into California and also within our um, uh, licensed market. How do you view hemp and how do you think about regulating it and we're... You know, yeah. Or are you thinking um, about it? I think about it a lot. Okay. You guys okay. think about it a lot because yeah. we get a lot of questions on hemp. So mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't have any. I think hemp is, uh, an, uh, again, I think it's a great product that if we reg, but but right now the, the Bureau or Food and Ag or Public Health, it doesn't fall under our uh, authority. Um, it doesn't fall under a cannabis or a cannabis product in the definition under MAUCRSA. So I truly feel, though, if we're going to bring hemp into 
uh, um, it, you know, I know you can get, I mean, as you guys know, our regulations don't allow distributors or retailers to transport or sell hemp, but, and, and you probably think, why, if you say you're okay with hemp, and I'll tell you why, I think hemp does need to be part of the regulated market. I think it should be regulated for, uh, so it falls under cannabis, so that way you're benefiting from selling hemp, because you're already going through such strict standards with cannabis, it makes sense that it comes through you guys, the proper supply chain, so our retailers and can sell it. So we'll see what happens. It, it looks like there's, you know, there's momentum. Yeah, there's momentum, and so I think that's a good thing for the industry because I really think that's going to help boost sales. I think, you know, consumer d is demanding more of these products, yeah. and I think it should fall under us. Yeah. And I think that is good for the licensees. Yeah. Because if mean, anybody can sell it and get it from anywhere in the country and it can have, and we don't even know what's in it, I don't think that's good. I agree. Right? That's, that's what we like to hear. Um, how do we reduce plastic waste? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Well, that's probably that's a popular an, that's, question. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's probably an easy answer. Maybe use I think hemp? you guys, I like, yeah, maybe use hemp. I think less packaging standards yeah. or restrictions, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's the answer. Um, yeah. Is it easy to get there? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think. Um, I think you know we got a lot of childproof packaging, yeah. and I think though that will change as people understand the product better and what we do really need to protect in childproof packaging. But I, I, we've heard you guys, uh, that's a huge issue for, huge and I issue. think it's, I think it, uh, rightfully so you should be bringing it up and continue to bring it up. Is there a possibility of establishing B Corps for cannabis? What would it take? What would it look like? What do you mean by B Corps? You know, like nonprofit for oh, good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We're doing, um, uh, we're doing a feasibility study right now for nonprofits. If you, it's in the statute that BCC oh. has to have our feasibility study finished and our report on whether it makes sense to have nonprofits, and that is due on January 1st of 2020. So we're right in the process right now. We're working with the uh, University of California Davis to oh, do great. that feasibility study. So if there's something anybody has you know questions about or you want to provide us some information we'll be happy That'd to take be huge. it yeah. I mean, especially if uh you know when the compassion bill passes having those outlets having that ability of uh being a nonprofit would yeah. be helpful to a lot of people and i think part of the if you're wondering well what's the feasibility study is it's i mean do we i mean i think we're looking at do nonprofits should we just have nonprofits that are able to continue to give you know uh, care to whether it's our elderly or veterans or yep. you know low income and should we continue without being part of the regulated system but we have maybe some you know uh, you know uh, restrictions in place so it's you know going to those populations or do we want it part of the regulated system mm -hmm. and so I think that's part of that feasibility study to see what's the what's that How best model it. yeah that's great yeah I'm sure we can provide feedback on that uh, this is the last question I have. We've been doing fantastic. Look at that. Um, there are there's still friction between you know what the state wants and what the locals want, right? And if we look at an example like AB thirteen fifty six that was being moved through uh, the committee, it was Ting's bill. Essentially said uh, it was trying to open up retail licenses, right? I'm not sure if you were following, but for those that weren't, um, to summarize, it's basically you have one license mandated for every 15,000 people in every jurisdiction that um, voted in favor over 50% for Prop 64, uh, or one license for every six alcohol licenses. I think that was the last iteration that I saw, something around there. Um, it didn't move through committee, but it was a bold move in trying to push uh, retail licenses and licenses in general um, in these counties. Uh, you know, as it's as we've seen, it's been pretty slow uh, for people to get regulated. Um, it's been slow for people to make decisions and get uh, offices stood up. Resources are thin to create another department to do that. Uh, you know, so our thoughts around like, how do we work on state and local? Where's that relationship? You know, you can only do so much. Um, local is where the rubber meets the road. And 
you know, a lot of us are stuck in, in working in, in uh, areas that may not pr allow it or prohibit it, or we have to travel through areas that may not allow it or prohibit it. Right. Um, so there's a lot of friction there, but I think there's a way to make it better if, you know, and open to your thoughts and how do we get there. Well, I think it's like anything. You're, you're trying to open up hearts and minds to cannabis uh, regulation, right? And that sometimes is not an easy sell. So for us at the Bureau, um, it's making sure our folks, we're comp always reaching out to the jurisdictions, providing them resources where they need them. Um, I think for a lot of cities and counties, it is a resource issue. They don't know where to turn to for answers. They don't know where to get started. Um, uh, um, Andre, who's my governmental affairs, I don't know where he is. He's somewhere. Andre's back in the back. There that's, he is, that's, right over there. That's hey, what Andre. he does 24-7. Uh, is going around to all these jurisdictions. How can we help? What can we what what can we provide you? What do you need from us? Um, we also are establishing our local liaison unit. So we have ten analysts we'll be hiring just to reach out to the local jurisdictions to help them. Or when they come, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're going to them. They don't know how to answer questions. And so I think it's education, education, and having resources. And at least at the Bureau, we think it's important that just like you, that we're responsive to them and that we provide resources. And if that means we need to go do regional trainings, we need to train their staff, we need to help train their applicants, that's what we're doing. Um, the provisionals with the temporaries, that's sort of, uh, we're, I'm hoping by the, you know, by the fall, we're fully staffed in our local liaison. You know, unfortunately, we've had to, we do have people in that unit, but they've all been there. Everybody's working on making sure there's no gap in licensure from the temporaries to the provisional. That is, I, that is number one priority. That is our number one priority, and you want us to have that as our number one priority right now. So, and and thanks not for like, like waiting to the last minute when your temp expires and you get your provisional. You're like, you're starting we're to move trying. through. Yeah. We're trying. And, and just so you know, um, I know we mentioned CDFA, and, and I, I understand it's been tough on them. I think we did give ourselves a little bit more room because we pushed out temporary expirations, and, and that really helped us, um, you know, get prepared but we have been sending our own staff over to cdfa to assist them we did in march we sent six staff we have staff there four staff right there so i don't want you to think just when we see another uh agency hurting we're also we understand if if they're not successful we're not successful so uh, we do look at those things and provide resources there too wherever we can help yeah, that's appreciated. And, and and Andre, if it's helpful for like people of the industry to to go on with you to these local governments and talk and you know just show who these stakeholders are, uh, that we're normal people, that we're parents, we're family, we're brothers, we're husbands, or like wives, we can we can do that. Uh, and maybe we just create this SWAT team coalition, and we I just love that SWAT team. Go I didn't think I'd ever hear that from and you. Systematically. <laughs> I mean, locals have, you know, local regulators have a lot of, they should be, you know, we need to get in front of them. All right. All right. Uh, so we have a few questions here. Um, and how much time do we have? Five minutes. Okay, cool. We have some questions. Hey, all right. Want to get the mic over? High five. That was a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> doing great. How are you doing today? Good, thank Good. you. So you were speaking earlier about um, enforcement, and we know that the state committed a lot of resources towards enforcement. And while I agree, enforcement need there's a need for enforcement. There's like ten times the need to make sure that everybody's licensed and everybody who wants that opportunity gets that opportunity to license. So in thinking about that hundred million dollars that was that was put towards the Bureau of Enforcement, um, how it relates to equity. So I deal a lot with the equity community. You talked about the money, $10 million, and, and now having to rethink that, adding $15 million. I think that you're asking the community that can least afford to wait for those resources to wait for resources. And, and I think some of those millions that went towards enforcement could have been provided for the equity community, and they can't wait anymore. They need those funds now because they don't have access to real estate, loans, family members that have money. They're
struggling right now, and these equity programs are struggling with, with funding to be able to process those licenses. We need that money now, and anything that you could do to make that happen, like urgency is necessary. Please. Appreciate the comment. I, 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 I agree. Yeah. So we, I, it's one thing to have, say you have all these millions of dollars. It's another thing you got to get it out to the, the folks that really need it, and they need it now. And so we are, I'm going to tell you we're making, but we also want to make sure it's getting to the right people. And I am going to say I'm happy that we're getting another $15 million and I'm happy to see some of these local jurisdictions start to come on board because that's going to help more people. Yep. Good afternoon, Lori. Um, my name is Reese from Posh Green. Um, and I know you were talking about enforcement, but we all know the biggest problem that we are having as um, people that own dispensaries, people that own deliveries, is weed maps. We all know weed maps is a big problem. I don't understand what is taking so long to get that under control when other people have started on third, a third party platform ordering systems to take you off if you don't have a license. So why isn't Weed Maps able to keep promoting that? That's why we're seeing the prices at 30% low because we cannot compete with the black market. I get calls daily from other people that are in their business vendors and they're hurting and they don't call. They're like, oh, how are you doing? I'm like, I actually shut my delivery down until my store opens because I can't afford it and I can't afford the store, especially being an equity applicant. So what people are saying is that we're, we're about to, we're not gonna make it. And I mean, people that's been around for, for a long time, way before me, are, is having trouble because the black market, I don't mean just flowers, I mean tinctures, I mean babes, they're getting real crafty out there and it's killing us. And before you know it, you guys are not gonna have people around to get money and to pioneer this industry because of what's going on. We math needs to be shut down. Interesting. Hi, Lori. Hi, Hua. My name is Jackie McGowan, K Street Consulting. Uh, thank you so much for this event. It's been amazing. Um, my question is about BCC enforcement on licensed operators. And I'm going to use a specific incident in Santa Cruz where BCC enforcement agents showed up un unexpected, unannounced, flashing badges, forcing their way in, pulling products off shelves, interrogating employees, and basically conducting a raid without kicking a door in. So for, first I want to ask, is there anyone in the audience that knows what a BCC badge looks like? Raise your hand. One. One person? No. Okay. So I want to know if there's a, going to be a hotline that we can call to verify that an, that an inspection is in, occurring. Because in this incident, um, these employees didn't know if they were being robbed. And there could be copycat uh, incidents like that, but um, I think there has to be education or at least in an announcement as to when enforcement is or an inspection is going to occur. So, um, Jackie, I don't know what specific premises you're talking about, but yeah, n normally um, our enforcement staff is very uh, professional. Uh, we do not announce before we go in, you're right, uh, but um, they do have uh, ID saying they're from the Bureau and they have business cards. Um, but if there's something more that can give comfort to our licensees that they know who's there, I think we're open to, I don't know if that's a hotline. I'm not, that maybe that's, that is, uh, I'm, I'll say this something hotlines, to something to verify. Um, then we're open to something like that. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for providing such a great format for collaboration within our industry. As a statewide distributor, I would like a transparent way to make an employee purchase and give samples to my staff to responsibly use. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, there's a bill moving forward, yes, uh, Skinner's example. bill, yep. uh, which would, would definitely help that. And it's looking really good. I, I agree. It looks really promising. Yeah. So you may have your wish. Yeah, I think you're going to have your wish. You can't uh, take credit for it. I think these guys can take credit yeah, for it. Yeah, I mean, it. it's definitely a, a collaboration, but yep. Mountain Cannabis Company, Trinity County. I have a very specific question for you. Is bulk flour not in its final packaged form, but with a COA, allowed to be transferred 
from distribution facility to distribution facility. The language in the BCC regulation 5037, there's one sentence for this language and it needs to be clarified. Can you tell me yes or no? If it can be transferred. Yeah, I see you're putting me on the spot right now. But That's I, I why think, you're here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uncomfortable right. questions in a comfortable environment. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's been our <laughs> theme. <laughs> he wants this mic. Wow. I go on and on. All right. <laughs> that's, that's not a that uncomfortable yeah, a question. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure yeah. I give you the right answer. So I think, think that needs to be on our new FAQ system because we get that question all the time. So, um... I will get your information and we're going to put that on the FAQs and we're going to email directly with the answer and make sure it's the right answer. How about that? Yeah, that sounds great. Does that work? Yeah, Does FAQ. Well, we can do it. Yeah. Hi, my name's Chris. Um, I'm a manufacturer in San Francisco. And um, I think, as you can tell, there's just a lot of fear. Uh, we don't know... We don't know if a dispensary is going to ask us to take something off of the shelf because of the way they're interpreting one of your rules. We don't know if we're doing the right thing according to the other agency. Um, one thing I'd like to suggest, what, what CDPH has done with us, is they say, hey, we want to come learn. We want to walk through your facility and see how you're doing it because we're both kind of learning together. And then we can help you understand what enforcement will look like as we figure it out. So to the BCC, I'm wondering if you guys maybe just like don't need to be enforcing people who are trying to jump through all these hoops right now, and instead you can just come and ask how we're doing it and, and learn from us. Because they're, we're trying to do our best, we just jump through the hoops. I don't really understand why you're enforcing dispensaries who are licensed right now, instead of saying, let's walk through and see how you're doing it, let's take some notes. Let's come back and say, hey, we actually don't like this way. Let's do it differently. But people shouldn't be scared that if the time stamps off on their receipt, that they're going to get a fine when they're trying to make payroll. You know, um, And some of these aren't my stories, but I'm in the middle of the supply chain, and I have the fear both from... So for the most part, when, when we say enforcing, uh, most of when we're going out into the market, probably the biggest thing that we are enforcing is when we come across product that hasn't come through the legal supply chain. So that's probably the biggest thing we're enforcing. Other than that, uh, we are trying to still educate our retailers. Um, I don't know about a timestamp. That sounds pretty... Well, uh, that sounds sort of I can give you very uh, ticky tacky. So yeah, I, I, mean, I, don't I don't know what that is. So let me give you one just specific example because I think this will help in the conversation. Um, around July first, some people from BCC came to one of our dispensaries, Spark, and they pointed out our packaging is non-compliant. But actually, it was compliant until July first, and they out of uh, Spark got nervous and so they pulled the product during our last two weeks to sell the product that would be non-compliant July first because they flagged it and Spark said just in case we can't sell this. And we said, we have two more weeks. It's our last two weeks to sell it. That and was so last year, yeah. yeah. There was some confusion. Just, too. just to yeah. summarize to Constructive, yeah. if you guys just came and said, hey, we're learning right now, we're just gathering information, and like we're not concerned about the outcome of what we're seeing right now because we want to work with you to figure out what's going to work for both of us, I think that would go a really long way. That would have been a better approach. A really yes. long way. You're right. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, July 1 was crazy, right? I mean, if we think about what was happening around that time. We just feel like we are partners. Yeah. Like we are your yeah. partners and that we are learning together because neither of us know how to do it. We have to build it together, but we need your help to not be scared of you. I don't want you to be scared of us. And I, I think you're absolutely right. July 1st last year was 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 it was very crazy i think we were all stressful and that would have been a better approach i agree with you but i think i don't want to just hear about these things when i come to the meadowlands i want you to reach out to the bureau and if it means you say forward this to Lori ajax i want her to know i'm saying i don't want you to be scared of us but i i, I want to hear it before before it's a huge problem and and it's great i'm glad you told me now but feel free to reach out to us too well cool. thanks i think that's the best theme of this whole weekend is just been let's talk more yes i i, I love it i love it yay that's a good theme uh that's just uh, just because reese reese asked about weed maps but we didn't really get Go an answer it. on whether or not anything was going to be done about that anytime soon <laughs> reese asked the question now are you blaming it on her? Wait a second. 
I, 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 I agree that weed maps is a problem and uh, we should have internet platforms that are advertising for the licensed market, not the unlicensed market. And so we are committed um, as a state and to uh, make sure that those that aren't getting into compliance, we get them into compliance and that would include weed maps. Yeah, I mean, if you're also like targeting people, there's a list of people you can go after if you want to. Just, just. Saying. I don't know that that's why we need weed maps, though. But I, you're I'm right. Just saying, you're, but you are right. It is you are a right. public. Uh, uh, anyway, that was the end of the questions. Uh, that was all the questions we have. Thank you, Lori, for your time here. Thank you. Uh, please show our appreciation and thank gratitude for you making such a long trip to get here. It's. Um, you know, really appreciate it. Is that great?